This is an introductory talk on agent-based modeling. Agent-based modeling is a tool for studying complex adaptive systems. With these tools, we're able to model systems by describing the agents and the environment, as well as the interactions between agents and environment. And through running the simulation, we can see how the system adapts and changes over time, and whether or not the model produces emergent patterns. The basic agent-based modeling paradigm consists of the observer, or the person who sets up or instantiates the world, the turtles, or agents, who are the individuals in the world, and the patches. The patches are the squares or tiles that make up the environment. There are three main phases in any agent-based model. There's the setup phase, where the world is instantiated, the runtime loop, where agents go through their behaviors and change their states, and the environment is updated. Also in the runtime loop, the screen or the output data is updated. And then there's the exit. Either the user hits the quit button, or the model runs to some terminal state. There are three main abstractions in any agent-based model. The first one is that there are agents with rules. The second is that there's an environment or space within which the agents live. And the third abstraction is time. So time is dictated by ticks, and one tick equals one cycle through the runtime loop. NetLogo is a programming language, and it is a modeling environment. It has easy-to-build widgets for making user interface elements, and it's very easy to draw the visualizations that let you see what's going on in the simulation. As a programming language, NetLogo is logo-based, and there are traditional constructs from computer science, such as variables, lists, procedures, and looping. So to create a computer model in NetLogo, you can see there are very distinct steps. Within the setup procedure, you can create the environment. Next, you can create turtles, or the agents and set some variables of the turtle, such as color, location, and size. And within the runtime loop, in this case it's called the go procedure, you tell the agents to follow some simple procedures for their behavior. So some things to keep in mind when you're modeling. A model is a representation of the interaction of real-world objects in a complex system. Again, it is a representation and it is not a real world replica. The goal when modeling is to gain an understanding of how the model works and how its results relate to a real-world phenomena. Often there are random factors built into a model and variables changed by the user cause different results to be generated each time a model is run. So what we get when we run a model many times is a landscape of outcomes. So rather than saying that Every time a model is run, the outcome will be A. We'll have some probabilistic outcomes. So we could say 30% of the time, the outcome of this model with these settings is A, whereas 70% of the time, the outcome of this model run with these same settings is B. So we learn about the overall behavior of the model. There's a classification system that was developed by Rough Garden in which we go from basic, very general models to models that have increasing complexity and detail. So the most basic is an idea model. For example, you could have a model of a predator and a prey, and they could be generic predator and prey. The next level, you could have a minimal model for a system. And now instead of predator and prey, you specify what the predator is, such as wolf, and what the prey is, such as caribou. So now it's getting a little more specific. And finally, there are full systems models. And this would be, for example, a model of every wolf and caribou within a five square mile section of Yellowstone. So it's very detailed, but at the same time, as you get more and more detailed, you decrease the generalizability and applicability of the model. 
When learning about modeling, there is a progression that we found to work. At the first step, we use models. We learn about models and modeling by running experiments, by changing variables, collecting data, and analyzing the results of running models. At the next stage, we start deconstructing models into their agents, behaviors, environment, and interactions. We're trying to figure out how models work. As we do this, we can develop some expertise in evaluating models. For example, we can determine what assumptions are being made in models. And we're gaining coding and decoding skills and being able to trace programs through to see how they work builds our sustained reasoning. At the next stage, we can work towards creating our own models. To do so, we use abstraction to determine which elements of the real world we think are important to represent in our model. And as we use our model, we evaluate it and we can see if the assumptions we made were correct.